the major problems I have with Hollywood movies, or at least with the mainstream majority, is that more often than not, these movies offer little in genuine surprise or deviation from the prescribed norms. Their plot points, beats, are as clear as the bones on an emaciated corpse. Blake Snyder usually be taken out the back and shot through the head. Though that's a bit harsh, he's not solely to blame for this three-act religion sweeping Hollywood. And yes, sometimes you just want to unscrew your head and leave it at the door, but if you've seen as many movies as me, either by choice, osmosis, or by the road well travelled, then you do tend to get a little despondent. Boy meets girl and or mentor father figure who sends boy out on a mission to slay monster slash evil empire, ends up killing a lot of people slash monsters in increasingly hideous and violent ways, ultimately triumphantly kissing the girl against a setting slash exploding sun slash falling building, the end question mark to be continued ad infinitum till your wallet bleeds with the tears of your lost innocence. All very exciting, I'm sure. And no, gender swapping the leads doesn't make the movie any better. But you can take a twist ending or a lovely surprise a step too far. And Night Shalaman, I am looking at you. But all in all, I want something more. I want to feel, I want to experience an, an emotional engagement or discover something that attempts to play on my mind or one that seeks to change me a little. At the very least, I want to be challenged and question the reality or unreality presented by the puppet masters that we call filmmakers. And there are few filmmakers that can do this successfully, fewer still that can enter the dream space and transfer this via the moving image and onto the eyeballs of the audience, fewer again who can do this with conviction and with meaning. These are men and women who can harness the logic of dreams and bend it to the narrow confines of a motion picture. These are the true renegades of cinema, the pioneers, pushing the boundaries of what can and can't be called a movie. Jodorowsky, Lynch, Cronenberg, just three names on a select list which arguably began with Brunel, a place of distorted reality and hidden desires, a world deliberately obtuse, wrapped in the ill-fitting gift-wrapping paper of a lost innocence with a tag written in a long-lost tongue. This is Babylon Undead, and this is Holy Motors.
2012 was a great year for film and for the 65th Cannes Film Festival. I could write an entire series on just this year. Such was the calibre of the movies. In competition alone, we had The Angel Share by Ken Loach, Like Someone in Love by Abbas Kurastami, Andrew Dominic's Killing Them Softly, David Cronenberg's Cosmopolis, and the deeply moving, beautiful Michael Haneke film, A More, which would ultimately win the Palme d'Or. 2012 was a tough year to be in competition if you were a filmmaker, but it was a great year for us. And nestled within this prestigious crowd came Leos Carax with Holy Motors, his first film since 1999's Polar X, a somewhat divisive movie loosely based on the Herman Melville novel Pierre or the Ambiguities, and one that's very hard to track down, especially if your French is as poor as mine. Holy Motors is a sprawling dreamscape of a movie in which our protagonist, Mr. Oscar, played by the mesmerizing Denis Lavant, rides around Paris in a long white limo, preparing for disparate roles for a perpetually unseen audience. These roles, these appointments are wide and varied, an old crone begging for change. A bizarre motion capture sequence in which our man performs a series of increasingly energetic action cues which culminate in a simulated sex scene in which cyber demons morph and intertwine. The director's comment on video games in Hollywood perhaps. There's Monsieur Merd, a violent sewer dwelling leprechaun who exposes himself much to the amusement of Eva Mendes, a wayward exhausted father with a tenuous connection to a daughter that may or may not be his, a dying old man, a silent assassin. These characters, players in a show for beings hidden in the shadows, godlike, they are unseen, ever demanding more. What the film is saying, is up to you. Is this a comment on the roles each of us play within society? Are these masks we wear for each other? Is this a treatise on acting, on the filmmaking process itself, or the absurdity of the very idea of religion? Are we puppets in some sick game devised by a bored deity, or are we the gods ourselves in this? Is this movie a critique of us? Is it we who are the terror? Or could it be that the movie is really nothing but a waking dream devoid of any true meaning? A movie we should simply allow to wash over us? Comments below, please. Leos Carax is one of those filmmakers for whom our patience is a rewarded virtue. Some of this is due to his attention to detail, no doubt. But it's also because, like so many filmmakers in this series, it is a challenge for him to find funding for his films. These are not commercial films designed to sit comfortably on a shelf next to the latest Disney movie, and he is the first to admit this. He has had his failures, his projects that haven't spread their wings. The list of projects that never took off is at least as long as his filmography including his 1984 debut, Boy Meets Girl, Carax has completed just five feature films. Bad Blood, also known as The Night Is Young, Le Man de Pont Lovers on the Bridge, Polar X, and tonight's subject, Holy Motors. All of his films deal with the fragility of human connections, the tissue paper that lie between our emotions, the things said and unsaid, his embrace of unconventional narrative and varying subject matter displays a desire to push the medium onwards and offers us a glimpse into what could be and what can be done with cinema. His films are like gossamer memories of a movie, the echoes of the piece, fractured and jagged. And no film from Carax is more like this than Holy Motors, none of his movies more dreamlike from the opening shot of the director ripping a door into this unreality through to the musical numbers, one with a troop of gypsy accordion players and a second a lullaby to Love Lost from Kylie Minogue and Levant himself, Carax is inviting us to approach the movie screen with a slightly cocked head. He wants us to scratch our heads. He wants us to fill in the banks and imprint upon the movie and have the movie itself imprint upon us. We 
some ways in the composition in the editing this is classic old school movie making but it's narrative devise easy glib explanations it's part thriller it's part musical it's part sci-fi horror comedy with elements of the french new wave but it's so much more than that yes it's so very french and yet it's so very otherworldly as well it's lynchian in a way that would make that filmmaker blush but unlike Lynch, there's a childlike joy permeating the movie that leaves you wanting more and leaves you walking a few steps lighter. The performances for lead actor and longtime collaborator Denis Lavar is something to behold, as is the supporting cast of Edith Scope, Eva Mendes, Carly Minogue, Michelle Piccoli, et al. But it is Lavant that is quite rightly the center of attention and the man whom this film was made for, literally. This is not a film for the faint-hearted. It is a strange, weird world, deliberately obtuse. It's funny, sad, thrilling, and deeply moving. At times it makes no sense, and yet makes all the sense in the world. And so much of this movie is what you bring to the experience. If you struggle going in, it will be a struggle. If you're in a bad mood, then this movie certainly won't help. This is not a film in which you can leave your brain hanging in the cloakroom. This is a, a film you must engage with. A film you must allow to wash over you and through you. A large glass of red wine or a sneaky bifter might help, but once you surrender, once you succumb to this trip, you will be rewarded and ultimately you will come away feeling a little changed. For the better, I hope. So please, dim the lights, sink back into your chair and prepare yourself for tonight's movie presentation from Leo Carax. This is Holy Motors.